this is my sound design cassette recorder model so again yeah model 7621 this has mic mic input with the audio input and a connection that would allow you to have a play pause button like the other tape recorder i it's the other tape recorder over here a lot of a lot of tape recorders did that. So an aux output or input, I'm not sure. I haven't I haven't used this in a while. So and also the headphone output. So this is a tone control. The volume control, which I think actually did one of the wires like came off on this, so it barely works at all. And it's always kind of stuck to loud <laughs> right now. You can fix that somehow. So you have record, which you have to pop over the lid, record. Rewind and play. Fast forward. There's actually a reason why rewind and play are on either side of fast forward. I mean, you know what I mean. I said that wrong. Yeah. Have rewind and fast forward are on either side of play. Just so stop right here and the eject button right there. Just right here. See up there that pattern in the grate. Automatic level control. Like on as you can see, little handle. This there would be like this would have a cover. The original would have had a cover on it to hold a cable to pull this power cable, but I don't have that on this one. So, so right here you see that that battery cover comes off. It's a bit tricky to get off, so I kind of leave it a little loose. Did I just snap it in again in the way that just makes it impossible to come off? I think I did. I'll have to fix that later. Okay, so. Caution to prevent electric shock. Do not remove back of cover. No user service will parts inside. Refer servicing to qualified service personnel. Did I say that? Wait a minute. Is that. Prevent electric shock. Do not. Yeah, almost the same thing. I think it might be something that they might have been kind of a standard thing that they put on. Yeah, so nine solid state devices, six transistors, one diode, one thermistor, one full wave rectifier. You can see 110 to 120 volts, 60 hertz, 4.7 watts, made in Japan. Well, I'll switch, to, switch from battery power to uh, powering from the cord. And. Well, here is kind of like the noise it makes when it's running. It's kind of this little strange whirring noise. I don't know. We'll kind of like it. We really kind of like the noise that it makes when it's playing. So, right here, listen. See, this is just open the lid. So, right there. Well, it's kind of like that noise. I don't know why. Rewind. Fast forward, which is a little iffy. I don't know why that is. And actually, so I'm gonna play and see the head there. It's pretty good shape. But like, I think the reason I don't use this as, as a tape recorder is because it's kind of it's, it's kind of getting old. And you can see that this pin drawer is kind of loose, and that means that it doesn't contact correctly because I think the springs have worn out over the years. When you press it up, full, when you press the play button down a little more it's a whole lot more firm I also think the capacitors have to be replaced too <laughs> even probably because this is quite old this seems to be quite old like it's like older than this one over here actually so like you see right here something kind of funny hit rewind and fast forward at the same time if you push down rewind and fast forward at the same time it'll put into play An awkward way to hold the camera. You to hit play, that does that, and hit rewind and fast forward. Like it does go back a little, but it doesn't push up, it doesn't push out by the same amount, but it does push the playhead out. And there's actually a reason for that, which, uh, which I might be able to tell you. Maybe you might be able to see when I, when I go inside of this. So yeah, that's basically everything on the outside. Look at the inside. Oh yeah, we have to unplug it first. 
and I'll try to be careful when doing this because I just had this plugged in. Now this this screw like it's I think those screws will just probably fall out when I get them out. Where did that go? Okay, I think that one goes up there. So that up there, that's... Oh man, am I missing a screw now? The screw probably fell out somewhere in here. The screw's loose, that, that can come off. It's over there. Is there any way we can move stuff so that it won't Okay, there you go. That'll allow us to move through into here. So you can see, here's the inside of this. See right here, this is the circuit board. I really don't know what logo that is. 4512F. I, most of these things I'm not really, not completely 100% sure of the meaning of, but anybody can tell me please tell me what the meaning of some of these things means so here one and a half volt x4 so for this takes four c batteries Interche interchangeable with ever ready real tone and sound design right there seven six two three eight one oh two one oh oh you see there's actually a circuit diagram on the inside of this DC six volts. Hmm. Strange card joke. DC six volts. It's unusual. I think maybe the, like another version there was an option for the, some sort of card jack. And also under here the speaker. Pioneer speaker. Seven. Yeah, so let's this cover back on. So, like, there's some reasons why I think that th this is, like, probably older than this is because, like, I was saying about that thing about the playheads coming out. So, which one, so which one did the, which one was that? So, if you can, let's try to get this turned around so I can screws. So I think, yeah, those are the gavel screws. I think I'll just go around to the other side. So, if you look at this right here, I don't know, this might be tricky to see. i to try to hold this with my foot in a strange way. So you see right here, when I press, make sure that's, I press like one, one of those buttons, I don't, remember, I don't exactly know which one that was. So here we have that. See that one moves in that direction? Press this, the one moves in that direction. See right here, that's moving those directions. So like move the bar in two different directions like that. And you see right here, when that pushes that, that pushes it forward. I think this is kind of like a transition between those old tape decks that would have had that slider control where you would just slide pull the lever to the left to rewind all the way to fast forward and pull it down to play. I think this is kind of like a transition between those two kind of types of mechanisms and like I think they're using one of those old mechanism, mechanisms and modifying it to work with this. So you can see right here that when I press those, it pushes it up, so it pushes the head up. I push one up, that when I push the play button up, that pushes the head up too. So I think that's just why that happens. 
Is there anything else in here of interest? So you see that right there, that's... I don't see anything specifically wrong with the belt. Don't really see anything... So I think that might be... So I'm just trying to study this mechanism, I don't usually get a ton of time to... Study this mechanism. Yeah, so it's interesting just to look at this man. Yeah, this is interesting to look at. This is basically it for most of this. Oh yeah, you can see there the wire that came off from the volume knob, all of that, or the wire that came off, or is it, where's the volume, which one was the tone again? The inner one was, what was the tone, was the tones? Wait a minute, I gotta look at this a little closely. This would be the volume. Oh yeah, you can see, just right there, this wire's come off, so now that's kind of why it's stuck permanently at full volume. <laughs> I guess that's it. I'm not going to spend the rest of this putting it together, so, yeah.